Hello everyone, um, this is a short video demonstrating some of the capabilities that I've built as part of a project called Visual Ada, um, which is the integration of the Ada slash GNAT tool chain into Visual Studio. So let's get started. Um, let's create a new project. Um, and as you'll see, there is a new submenu within the project templates called Ada, which contains a bunch of templates which I've developed. Uh, you know, there's a console application, static library, dynamic library, and Windows GUI type applications. Along with that, there is some uh, templates to develop uh, applications uh, for universal Windows, i.e. WinRT, which can run under the Windows Store or be submitted to the Windows Store. So the most extensive or the most feature-rich application is this one called um, Ada XAML application, which um, basically uses a geolocation service to display a map showing your current location along with your latitude and longitude and how accurate those figures are provided by the underlying OS. So let's create that solution uh, project. Um, you notice I've created it with Git repository, so that creates a local Git repo, which can then be synced onto GitHub. So let's create this. It does take a few seconds to load. Okay, you'll see it's created two projects: a C sharp XAML project. And this project contains the actual XAML GUI design as well as a view model which the ADA system or ADA program uses to communicate uh, data back and forth between the two. So the actual rendering is done by the XAML engine um, as part of Windows but the ADA program actually drives all the data and the layout. So let's have a look at what this application does in real, in real sense by building it first. Now before we build it I need to switch across to x64 because I only have an x64 compiler here and I also need to set up a quick build dependency, build dependency between the two projects. So. Okay, let's rebuild that. Okay, so that's built the XAML portion for the solution and now it's compiling the ADA portion. The ADA portion does take a bit of time because it's pulling in packages um, from the WinRT library that I've developed and some of those packages are quite big. Um, for example, the XAML controls package is roughly 50,000 lines of code. Um, so any sort of XAML type application will take a little bit of time to build. Okay, it's nearly there. In the meantime I'll open up these windows of code and walk you through the code. It's just about finished. Let's just turn the final link. Okay, there it's linked. Uh, okay, let's deploy that. Deploying it just basically means ins it's installing it. Now, because I've got my machine set up as a developer, I can install Windows Store type apps without any hassle and you'll see that the application has gone there. So if I uninstall that, and then deploy again, and you'll see it reappear. Okay, let's run this app and I'll show you what it does. 
Go to Postcode's asking permission if it can access your locations for the location service. I'll just say, say yes. And give it a few seconds. And there you have it. Um, I won't zoom in closer. Um, suffice to say that if I zoom in right in, it goes to the exact street where I live. Um, and as you can see, I live in Sydney. So I've got a small button here, which basically does that. Um, the rest of the buttons don't do anything. They're not tied to anything. Um, so I'll close that down, and we can run under debugging and you'll see some of the code. Okay, the entry point is basically Win main CRT startup, um, and all it does is call the main procedure that's generated by the ADA binder. The ADA binder will then call in the main application, which is app one, and basically all app one does is initializes the WinRT runtime and then calls the start procedure, giving it a callback to execute now that callback basically creates the application object or the app overrides object sorry and then uh, continues on the app overrides uh, is exactly that it just overrides functions and the one I'm particularly interested in is on launched um, so the on launched function override basically sets up um, first get, gets the current window creates the application which is that file there that XAML file and then creates the view model that's associated with that we then do a query interface uh, for the UI elements on the, from the view and set up handlers for the like and dislike um, buttons that I showed you previously. Uh, I also need a dispatcher to be able to execute uh, callbacks within the context of the UI thread. Uh, so basically what I do is initialize the variables on the app view model, tell the view that this is the app view model to use, um, set up the event handlers for the on like and on dislike, initialize the components, um, put the content or set the window content and then activate the win window and then get the uh, dispatcher and then pass the dispatcher along with the app view model to the two tasks that I'm going to run in parallel. So the GUI task as you saw, has an entry for the start start entry, and all it does is basically uh, creates a time formatter. Uh, this function is part of the WinRT bindings that I've also generated. Uh, it then runs a callback within the context of the UI thread via calling the run async on the dispatcher, and which is this function procedure sorry and it just formats the date and time and puts it into a buffer and sets it in the app view model and then just frees up the string allocated earlier so every 15 milliseconds the time is uploaded on the GUI and that's achieved by basically setting the current time here on the app view model uh, similarly the locator, locator task has a start entry, it's a little bit more involved. Um, it basically starts up a UI request to be able to access the um, geolocation service by again by running a, a callback underneath the UI thread. Um, so the request basically uh, runs a request async task which is a static function within the WinRT bindings. Once that is completed 
um, the status is checked whether it's complete. I think if I get the results, if the results allow, then the request accepted and set to true, which is there. Okay, the locator task then waits for that to become true. Once it's true, it uses a geolocation service created by the static function create geolocator. Um, gets the position asynchronously and tells the system, okay, run this callback once it's complete. Once that is actually complete, um, again, checks the status for whether it's complete. Um, gets the results, sets the flag to say it's got the position, gets the co coordinates, um, and then gets those, and it uh, gets a latitude, longitude, and accuracy, and then creates a geo point based off those three. So they're all set up here. Okay, once that's complete. Uh, by waiting for the got position flag, um, we then update the UI via, again by the dispatcher on the UI thread and that basically um, formats the accuracy buffer which is a double into a string and then passes all four values through to the app model which then basically triggers through the data binding on the XAML code to update. Um, so if you look at the app model, it's got some private members and has various functions, or properties I should say, get and set properties and this class implements I notified property change, which basically triggers whenever you set a variable or set a property, it triggers a change on the underlying XAML. So if we have a look at the underlying XAML, um, you'll see that it's uh, a page as a grid. Uh, this will actually load in a second, I'll give it time. Got two columns, three rows. Um, setting some colours on the borders for each of those. Has a command bar um, the on mic. Uh, there you go. So it has a command bar and that will be highlighted up here. Uh, with the click events and click event for on like and click event for on dislike. And it has these three four text boxes with the appropriate bindings binding being the binding to the V model and the actual property. So let's run this on the debug. Uh, let's just close that because I'm not interested in those ones. So the main portion of the program are these um, these routines and callbacks. So let's set a breakpoint here through the normal F9 in Visual Studio, F5 to run it. Oops, it's showing you where I live, but that's okay. Um, here you'll see the frame rate counter or is 60 and this is CPU utilization so it's just ticking over 1% uh, so it's doing 60 frames per second um, so if I uh, so click that and the breakpoint was hit and step through that and just do F5 continue and if I go back to here and set a breakpoint and if I, when I click OK, that breakpoint should be hit, which it did. Okay, so let's just take all those breakpoints. Um, 
so basically that's it. Um, it's a fairly trivial application as such, but it sort of demonstrates some of the um, features that we can like you need build into using the WinRT bindings along with um, the uh, Visual Studio integration. Thanks. Bye.